So this is a continuation of a topic that I briefly touched upon two years ago in my video about career boosts, real boosts, etc. I mentioned this guy who quote unquote successfully changed himself to look Korean. And I also talk about this absolute abomination of a movie called Cloud Atlas. This little segment was literally only two minutes of a 30 minute long video. So today I actually want to talk in depth about white people changing themselves to look Asian and about yellow face in Hollywood. Plus I'm also going to break down why it is almost impossible for a European descent person to pass as an East Asian no matter how many surgeries this person undergoes. Let's look at the first example. Now this young guy underwent eyelid surgery to look Japanese, I guess. Ugh, it still scares me. This has such a strong uncanny valley effect on me and probably on a lot of you guys too. So I actually researched how they do this kind of surgery and it's honestly bone chilling. Before I explain how, I need to clarify that there are many methods, so I'm not quite sure which one is the most accurate. So the first thing they do is cut out a part of your skin that has the same density and thinness of your natural eyelid and then plant that skin on a part of your eyelid where it usually creases and then pull that skin downwards to the lash line. Lastly, fill that space up with body fat to get that epicanthic look, I guess. The healing process is really long. Another method is injecting the space between the eyebrows and the upper lash line with some sort of fat that doesn't dissolve and then make small incisions either here or here to pull the skin to create monoliths or epicanthic folds. Yeah. As you can see, this procedure turned out to be a major failure and I honestly feel really sorry for this guy. Because it's impossible to reverse that surgery. Once it's all healed up, your skin is fused together, like everything is melted together, so there is no chance of going back to how you once looked like before. So let's actually see what went wrong. The biggest problem here is that European and East Asian skulls are very, very different from each other. We East Asians have broader, flatter faces, our brow ridges is usually very even and flat, we lack definition in brow bone, we have more prominent cheekbones, the bone around the eye socket is flat and even like the brow bone and this of course affects the depth of the eyes. Now when you look at the Caucasian skull you notice how almost every bone is protruding forwards, especially the brow ridge. So he has a narrow nose with a high root and his eyes are deep deep set. So to fill up all that deep empty space between the eyes, brow bone and nose, the doctors had to fill it up with lots of skin and fat dramatically widening the space between the eyes. They should have stopped at least here but they went overboard with it and it just ends up looking like he's wearing a mask. Which he kind of is. It just looks fake, definitely not like a real person. If I had no context to who he is or what he did to look like this and I saw him on the street walking towards me, I would be absolutely terrified. Once our brain decides that you're human, we get really freaked out if we notice that it's actually not human. Our brain does not respond well to being tricked. In 2010, a study in the journal Psychological Science found that we are pretty good at spotting fakes because we look at the eyes. Period. Anyways, let's look at the next example. This Brazilian man underwent 10 different eye surgeries to achieve this quote-unquote Korean look. Now, I gotta say, when I first saw his transformation, I thought it was somewhat successful because aesthetically, in some pictures, he would totally pass as an East Asian. But when I took a look at his Facebook HD pictures, his videos, etc., I experienced the same creepy uncanny valley feeling that I had before. The amount of fat and skin that is just laying on his upper eyelashes is kind of alarming. In most pictures, it looks like he's been freshly stung by a bee. And yes, there are plenty of East Asians who have that exact eye shape. And yes, admittedly, it doesn't really look like he's wearing a mask, but I don't know, something still doesn't look right here. I compared his eyes with other monolith slash epicanthic eyes and then it became really clear to me. If you look at these examples, you can see there is definition and shadow going on. You can slightly see the rounding of the eyeball above the skin. And most importantly, take a look at this very sharp and thin delicate line here at the inner corners where the monoliths begin. It's almost impossible for people who have a European school to accurately achieve that. This part with plastic surgery. The problem is the eye 
obviously is a sensitive organ. It's surrounded by bone, tendons, and muscle. All of that is connected to the eye socket, which is connected to the muscle of the brow ridge and the cheeks. So you can't just cut into that without up an important nerve. All what those doctors could do is fattening up the eyelid. But here's the thing, they are forgetting that this only creates a waxy, plastic looking eyelid. It doesn't look like there's blood and nerves under there, it just doesn't look alive. And anatomically, it also looks weird. No. Oh wow, okay, so in motion it's much more disturbing. Oh, okay, there is a lot to unpack here. So first, the inner corners of his eyes have this shape instead of this shape. Second, we can see how his eyelid here is weirdly pulled upwards at the outer corner of the eyes. It's kind of like... Like this, it's, it's like weirdly pulled upwards there, yeah. These shapes make sense, but there's no one who has this shape of eye. Let me quickly explain. So the corner of the East Asian school's eye is much smaller than the European one. This part makes the eye appear more pulled rather than open. The corner of the eye on the Caucasian school is much bigger, which gives the eyelids more depth. That's why I think his eyelid is weirdly pulled upwards here when it actually has to go either lateral or slightly downwards. Third, see how the bottom part does not harmonize with the upper plastic part of his face? The chin, the jaw, the teeth, it just all looks like it belongs to a completely different person. He was so beautiful. What a shame. I just opened the comment section of my videos and... Whew. What I constantly keep seeing in my comment section of my videos about Asian topics is these Asian fetishists who change themselves with makeup or surgery to look more Asian and kawaii. They, they just love to tell us that race is just a social construct. Let me tell you, it's not. You can't change your race. It is genetic and relates to ancestry. Scientists have documented that the human species diverged into three branches in prehistory. There are three genetic races, Asian, African, and Caucasian. These races have different skin tones, different bone structure, and different propensities for height, muscle build, and body proportion. I guess you can change your eyelids, your hair color, you can tan your skin, etc. But you cannot and will never successfully change your racial slash genetic makeup except through long-term breeding. Now let's take a look at the movie Cloud Atlas, or as I like to call, Clown Atlas. <laughs> to keep it short, this movie is about different people living different lives and different time periods. So rather than casting actual Korean people for the Korean part of the story, the white actors were prosthetics to play them. <laughs> It's this extraordinary experience where what looks like it can't be done is is somehow being done. <laughs> <laughs> ah, look at the top of his head! <laughs> Hugh Grant, what are you doing, man? The eyes, the shape, the eyebrows. Ugh. I could literally write a whole thesis solely about how racist these eyebrows are. What is this hair? Oh my god, is that Hugo weaving? It's like if John Mulaney and Spock had an alien son. This guy looks like if Keanu Reeves was a melted wax figure. Oh god. So I believe this movie came out in 2013 and there are so many funny and sad stories about how Asians reacted to this movie. For example, Guy Aoki, president of the Media Action Network for Asian Americans, was furious at the director. Aoki was particularly concerned by a segment set in futuristic South Korea in which the actors James Durgy, James Darcy, and Hugo Weaving are made up to play Asian characters. He said, Every major male character in the Korean story is played by non-Asian actors in really bad yellow face makeup. In the modern age of movie makeup, it is disturbing to see poorly done Asian eye prosthetics to make Caucasian men look Asian. It would have been a great stereotype-busting role for an Asian American actor to play, since Asian men aren't allowed to be dynamic or heroic very often. Yeah. I agree. Asian Americans at the preview screening burst out laughing because weaving looked terrible, like a Vulcan on Star Trek. Donna Bae, a well-known Korean actress in Korea, starred in this movie and when that movie was released in Seoul, many Koreans were deeply disturbed by the portrayal of their own people. And rightfully so. There were so many stories of how Koreans just walked out of the cinema being completely weirded out. And I mean, yeah, I can't blame them. <laughs> 
disgusting shit. So let's actually explore why it looks disturbing. First, I want to acknowledge how funny it is how Hollywood sees us. There is a variety of different looking eyes in East Asia. More than 50% of East Asians have big double eyelids or epicantic folds, but these Hollywood guys just stereotypically put thick, heavy monoliths on everyone. It's kind of funny. It's like, oh, so we're gonna play as Koreans? That's easy. We just gotta do this, right? <laughs> After some research, I found out that the makeup artist for this movie was Jeremy Woodman. He actually shared in an interview how he changed their look and wow, what a non-surprise. It turns out that he only used a few tools. He said the big challenge was turning our Caucasian actors into Asian actors, including Jim Sturgis. We used three pieces on Jim, including a forehead piece that changed his hairline and took away his eyebrows and two eyelids. So that's the problem. If they really wanted to sell these actors being Asian, they should have done much more. Just putting thin latex skin over the forehead and fat monoliths will only make you look like a wax horror creature. As I mentioned earlier, the bone structure and the muscles play a huge role in how we appear. Caucasians tend to have less prominent cheeks, less prominent cheekbones, deeper set eye sockets, much taller, narrow nose bridge, more pointed noses, flared nostrils, much sharper, longer chin. So if you cover the eyes, it totally looks like a Caucasian man because of all of these characteristics. See how his cheeks are completely flat? They should have added a cheekbone prosthetic and a different nose and possibly also different looking lips maybe. Let's take a look at these East Asian men. They all have these big high protruding cheekbones. By the way, I'm not saying Europeans don't have prominent cheekbones. Of course some do, but they are, again, different. They are much sharper, smaller and shorter. Whereas East Asians have a more rounder, higher cheekbone. See that here? It's like much more rounded here. Here. Wow, his cheeks are marvelous. Can I just say that I find it really sad how cheekbone reduction surgery is so popular in Korea. I mean, they can do whatever they want, but me personally, I think cheekbones are so fucking sexy. Like, why would you lose that? Anyways, let's continue. So, since the actors had to wear these thick monolith prosthetics, showing genuine emotion through the eyes was almost impossible, as you can see. <laughs> Oh god. Mm. By the way, he's supposed to be the good guy of the story, but in some shots he looks absolutely demonic. <laughs> Here. See that unusual dark shadow at the inner corner of his eyes? That's actually from the thick eye prosthetics. And when you look at the making of videos, you can see his real eyelids underneath the latex skin. So what they had to do was give all those actors CGI monoliths every time they closed their eyes or had them have opened. <laughs> Oh god, just look at how blurred the lines of his eyes are. The makeup already looks horrible, but the CGI eyelids are the cherry on top, man. Oh, this whole thing looks like a video game. Oh god, Halle Berry, what are you doing? And what's up with this Chinese Shaolin beard? Isn't she supposed to play a Korean old man? Another thing I want to point out is this story takes place in futuristic Seoul. So, before I go on, let's see how apartments in Seoul look like right now. Cute, right? Now let's watch Hollywood's interpretation of futuristic Korean homes. Welcome to Habitat Bay. <laughs> it's so stereotypical. This is your bed. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, we would totally live in apartments with ancient traditional corny decorations, just like all African people live in huts, Indian people live in palaces, and Europeans live in fortresses, right? Honestly, this looks much more Japanese than Korean. Now let's take a look at the futuristic Korean clothes. So for context, this was the current fashion in 2013 in Korea. Now let's see what they came up with. Wow, what a surprise. Everything's heavily inspired by ancient East Asian traditional clothes. <laughs> That complete lack of originality and imagination is 
so depressing. It's so uninspired and boring how white Hollywood directors think it would look like. Wait, that's the director? Of course that's the director. You know, I would love to see white people's reaction to an Asian person's interpretation of futuristic Europe. Imagine if Bong Joon-ho put white people in modern Barra clothes and said, yeah, this is how Europeans would look like in the future and by the way, they live in futuristic metal fortresses. <laughs> I also see this racist trope a lot. Rebellious East Asian girls in Hollywood movies always having these ugly highlights in their black hair to stand out. That's like so overused. Oh god, did I look so good? This movie wasn't the only case of yellow face. Hollywood has been doing this for centuries and still to this day. It's already a bad thing when these parts which are meant for Asians go to white actors, but when they additionally portray Asians as a bad stereotype, it's even more heartbreaking. Here's Rob Schneider with fake buck teeth, a bad bowl cut and a very offensive accent. How about with this? We're gonna supply one for $100. $100 hairs? It's a lot of doll hairs. Oh, come again? Do but, dolls come with that many hairs? <laughs> Will you be needing a, a loom? What? A loom? We, uh, we'll take two looms, by the way. Yeah. Paul Rodriguez as Mr. Wong, Christopher Walken as Feng, they didn't even try with this one, Nicolas Cage as Dr. Fu Manchu, Ted Raimi as Wing, by the way, this is supposed to be a Chinese god of war, David Carradine as Pung Dong, the name of the character is a pun, being both a stereotypical Chinese sounding name and slang for genitalia. Wow, I love Hollywood. Colin Firth as Wei Ling Su, what the fuck? <laughs> And when Asians actually do get to play in a movie, they either get cast as the kung fu karate guy, the wise enlightened man who will show you the path, or the nerdy sidekick character. And don't even get me started on the women. Kim examined the roles and stereotypes of Asian women in film and TV in a 1988 documentary and revisited the topic in 2011. 23 years later, she didn't find that much had changed. The same archetypes still exist today. Wow. The most common representations of Asian women were of them as docile sex objects. You get a massage from Chinese girl people. Or as kind of sinister dragon lady types who would stab you in the back. Dragon lady was sometimes sexy too. So there's a very interesting Japanese article about casting East Asian people in Hollywood. Before I continue, I need to say that I don't share the same opinions with the author, but I do think she has an interesting view on these casting choices Hollywood makes. Again, I don't agree with her, but I really, really want to hear your guys' opinions on this quote-unquote issue. So in this article, this journalist writes how actors in East Asia like China, Korea, Japan, etc. are all not only multi-talented people, but also extremely beautiful. Here are some examples. Now when you look at Hollywood, notice what kind of East Asian actors get cast in major movies or TV shows. The author writes that most of these Asian American actors are traditionally not good looking people, or at least very average looking. She further asks why Hollywood doesn't cast beautiful looking Asian people like they do with their white actors. This guy, for example, was recently cast as Shang-Chi, a Marvel superhero, and I remember actually watching a video where a lot of Chinese people were disappointed pointed with the casting choice. Some people saying that he looked like a dad, that he doesn't accurately represent Chinese people, and that he should have cast a good-looking actor like him or him. I think it's a little bit of比较有魅力的男性非常多，那在国外经常他们会选角色的时候选亚裔，他们都选的，我觉得都不是我们认为好看的那一些。所以反正每次我一看到国外电影的时候，我看到这样，我们认为不是最帅的人，但是去却代表
I'm good. I don't believe that Hollywood is that evil that they are purposely selecting average looking Asians for their roles and just only beautiful um, white actors for their European roles. Like, nah, that's like borderline Nazi shit, so no. But let me know what you guys think of all this. I'm very interested in your guys' take. So yeah, please share them with me in the comment section below. And yeah. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys next week. Bye-bye.